So we got here on Wednesday. We knew we had a lot to do. We knew we had to somehow find sources for food, medical supplies, gas, transportation, and security. Friday morning we wake up 5.30 a.m. and head to the executive airport. To Jay, Jeremy, and Locke went to the UN headquarters at the airport and just walked right in. I don't know how, I don't know why no one stopped us, but we just went in and started talking to people. He told me I have one package and a strap to my chest. It looked kind of sketchy, almost like a bomb or something. And I was going a day before to drop off emergency cash for Charles uh, to get to him um, just in case something happened with the convoy coming in the group of cars. So Friday morning we wake up, Jeremy gets on the helicopter, and now we got 24 hours to raise supplies. It's 3 p.m. We're supposed to leave around 10 to Haiti, and at this point we don't have a truck and we don't have supplies at 3. And we've been working for the past four days to get just that. It's 4.15 and we still don't have anything. Um, <laughs> and we only have one truck. The next moment, with some running around and franticness, and God doing whatever he wants. We ended up having two trucks, and USAID was glad to fill one of them to the brim with ample food, tents, medical supplies, water, mysterious packages from Taiwan. They filled it up, so God just pretty much filled our trucks without us doing anything. We load up about 2,500 pounds of beans and rice and a few other food supplies. We were able to bring in about 150 gallons of diesel, which will power the orphanage and the site we're at for at least another three weeks, probably for another month. And we have one truck that is filled to the brim from the UN with fuel, with all these donated supplies that we didn't pay a dime for from the UN. About 9, 30, 10 o'clock, we meet, we talk, we pray and we head off to the border, knowing that we got this six hour drive, we have two loaded trucks, miraculously, um, seeing as how at three o'clock we had no trucks and no supplies, and by 10 o'clock we have two loaded trucks. We're on our way, we get some food on the way, there's a huge accident right in front, we get lost one time, pull up to ask for directions, guy pulls the gun, but... The border was not hectic, but backed up. Uh, traffic was at a standstill and we had driven throughout the night, we were able to get a lot of food there. I would estimate possibly seven to ten tons of food, mostly food, medical supplies, and diesel and propane. After much traveling and detailed scheduling and working everything out, we finally get the supplies to the compound, and all we have left to do is unload it. And all the people came together and helped us. We had um, lines of people all the way to uh, you know taking it off the truck because we had to get get the uh, goods across a bridge that had been flooded out from the hurricanes last year and never been fixed and we start unloading supplies and before we know it we have literally the uh, it feels like half the community of Messiah but about 40 guys not to mention women and children who are helping um, and we form these lines where everyone's just grabbing and tossing and we unload these trucks in about two and a half hours incredible um, considering how many goods they were and it was great because after every inkling of speculation and thought and planning and everything in theory we finally just got to put our head down grab boxes and move them so it was great fun I know for a lot or all the guys probably that we just got to have one job grab it, move it, and let them have the, the supplies. The church turned into a death room slash hospital room, and Locke and I um, had to carry out a couple people that were, according to them, hours from dying. And then we got to walk around um, in the room and just be with some of the people, pray with some of the people. It took us a total of probably 24 hours to get in and out of Haiti. But yeah, we came home yesterday. It's been kind of a recovery ever since. Saturday night was the first deep, restful, peaceful sleep I've gotten since the earthquake.